Good morning. Uh, my name is Bill Richardson, and I am one of the head referees for the upcoming Madison County Tournament. I wanted to make sure that uh, we welcome you, and this is counting as the driver's meeting for all teams and coaches. So welcome, and I hope that you're all getting prepared and trying to win the upcoming matches. Now, we got to discuss some rules. Uh, the first thing I must say is make sure everyone has read all the rules. Please, please, please read the rules with your coaches and go through the official game FAQ. Uh, some of the general rules we're going to talk about, one of the most important today is uh, G1, which is sportsmanship and kind of a student behavior. Sportsmanship is a great thing, but when you decide to argue and pitch fits and be disrespectful, whether it's to another team or referee, it will not be tolerated. If it's reported, we'll investigate it. When it is obvious that a team or person is disrespectful to a referee, a judge, or anyone, that will not be tolerated and will be an automatic disqualification. If it is repeated over and over, you are now possibly being ejected from the eliminations because of that behavior. So please, please, please make sure you are absolutely 100% respectful to other teams and referees and judges. Also, um, another is this must be a student-centered uh, competition. In other words, coaches do not program, parents do not program, build anything. Students must be the ones that work on the robots. They must code it and everything else. Coaches, stay away. Parents, stay away. What happens is if someone sees a parent working on a robot or a coach and it's reported, it'll be investigated and that will then be uh, counted against you and it can disqualify you from all judged events or I mean judged awards. All right, inspection really quickly. You must start 18 by 18 by 18. It's the same rule every year. <laughs> you must start every match in that in that dimension but you may expand. So in an inspection, we must see your robot fully expanded. Do not uh, try to hide anything. Try to show fully expansion because any referee at any time on the field can ask for a measurement. There must be no jagged edges on axles, metal, anything. That is 100% up to inspectors and referees. If they say it is too jagged, you have to go sand it down. You can't argue um, and it, it must be done, okay, because that's that's just part of being safe. 88 total watts of motors. Uh, the standard VEX motor is 11 watts, so you can have eight of the large regular motors you know, or combinations, according to the rules, up to 88 watts, and you have to show the documentation or proof of it. One brain and one battery. Also, you must be um, coding your robot number into the system because we are using the new VEX control system and it reads your robot number from your coding. So put your your number, whether it's 39212A, you put that in there in your coding so the computer system can pick it up. If it is not in there and you cannot get it programmed before the tournament starts, then you are out of the tournament. Everything must be done. That includes inspection. You have to be passed by the time the tournament starts. If it doesn't, you're done. Um, also, one one thing that's always uh, kind of hard to understand for some people is pneumatic systems. You may have two tanks up to 100 total PSI. If they're in series, it's 100 average. In the parallel, it is 100, okay? If they're separate, it's 100. You can have as many pistons as you want. Those do not count as drive systems, but they must be 100% VEX parts, air tubing, everything. Um, also, another one is plates. I need to see, or the inspectors need to see, your team colors. In other words, if you are red, one red on one side of the robot, one red on the other with your team numbers on it. I do not and will not pass anyone that has red and blue plates on at the same time where the referees can be confused. It is very hard to do that. The plates cannot be inside the robot. They must be clearly visible on opposite sides or opposing sides of the robot. You will not be passed inspection until those are done. So when you come to inspection, have your controller with you, maybe a set of safety glasses, and have everything ready to go. You should pre-inspect your robot, or your coach should as well, before you ever even show up to the tournament. 
All right, violations, disablements. Disablements are usually a safety violation where you are entangled with a net or you're endangering another opponent or partner doing really not smart things. We may tell you to disable. If, if I say team XYZ disable, that means you put your controller down. That does not mean con continue driving for another five to 10 seconds. That means put your controller down now. Minor violation is just what it sounds like. It's minor, it's nothing that was score affecting, but it is minor violation. Multiple, mi multiple meaning more than one, can also count as a disqualification. Major rule violations, these are in the rules. These are usually score affecting or some major thing that is causing a disruption of the game. Those can result in a disqualification as well. A disqualification is where you have either done things multiple times or it's a major enough violation that I have to disqualify you. What that means is if you are in qualifications, that means just you and your team are disqualified, not your alliance member and not anyone else. So if, as far as how the scoring works, you need to look in the rules for that. But in qualifications, it is just your team. However, in eliminations, either, either alliance member if they get DQ'd, the whole alliance is disqualified and removed from eliminations because it is single elimination. Um, and that's the that's one big thing. Um, all right, so layout of the field. Number one thing when a match is going on, one of the number one things is keep your hands out of the field. The only time you can do uh, hands in the field is loading, which we will cover later. All right, layout. There are two offensive zones. Uh, blue is on the blue side, red is on the red side. There's colored poles on each side of the field. Those are your elevation bars and poles. Red is where red starts. Blue is where blue starts, and that's also where you hang. Um, there's also neutral zones for autonomous. We'll talk about autonomous in a second. Make sure you look at the manual for the way the field is laid out. Initially, there are 12 balls on the field, and there are 22 balls per alliance for match loads plus one alliance tri ball, one blue, one red for each team. And you uh, have those, you must start those touching the robot. Uh, if you choose not to use them, well, look in the rules. But you have to have it touching the robot and hopefully know how to use it. Um, all right, so another big thing that we're going to talk about is descoring. Uh, you cannot de-score an opponent's goal unless they are double zoned. So here's what that means. Two robots in one offensive zone. Doesn't matter which zone, it's just in an offensive zone. You cannot be touch or they they it's not double zoning if they are touching the long uh, long barrier or the elevation bar. However, what I'm going to say is this. Double zoning from previous matches watched is very quick. Do not think that if you're double zoned, you can just run over, tap the long barrier, and then come back in. It's still going to be double zoning. What that means is you're, if you're sitting on the bar, you're really in both zones, and you're not going to be considered double zoning. If you're stuck on the bar, it's not double zoning. But as soon as I see a double zoning, let's say, for instance, I can say, Red double zoned. What that means is blue can then de-score the red goal. If I say blue double zoned, that means you know red and go to town and so forth. Back back and forth. It, it's very fast. And hopefully, what we'll see is if you become un-double zoned, we'll say double zone cleared or you're clear, or something like that. But teams have to take their own ownership of this because it's very quick, it's very hard and very fast. So we're not only having to watch for double zoning, pinning, but we're doing pinning and trapping and everything else. So don't yell at the referees. They're doing the best they can. All right. Um, so we're going we're gonna to call it as red double zoning or blue double zoning. And the other team must know that, hey, they can de-score at that point. Now, um, Just a reminder, that is the only time you can de-score. De-scoring is a major violation. <laughs> and if it is match affecting, it's an auto DQ. Okay, let's cover autonomous. Autonomous is the first 15 seconds of every match. And uh, you are in control of your robot at all times. So that's what Vex says. So what that means is, is 
During Autonomous, you programmed the robot to do things. If you programmed it wrong and it entangles the net or it goes, does something wrong, you are accountable for that action. So you are not allowed to cross over into the line past the neutral zone. So the neutral zone is kind of where both robots can touch, they can move, but as soon as you cross the far tape line where it is, you're touching a gray tile with a wheel, a zip tie, anything, and you're over that line and that touching happens over the line, then that negates your autonomous win. It automatically goes to the other side, okay? So if red crosses over the line and touches the floor, blue automatically wins. Blue crosses, red automatically wins. But they have to be touching the gray tiles on the other side of the line. Automatic win point is basically where you're given an automatic win point for the tie breaking system and rankings. <laughs> and what that means is you have to score one you have to score your tribe, your colored tri ball in your colored goal. You have to remove one ball from the corner loading zone. And then you also have to be touching your, uh, hang, your hang, your, you have to touch the colored bars on your side. In other words, if you're red, you gotta touch red, blue, you gotta touch blue. So you gotta touch the elevation bars and the other two things as well to be given. <clears throat> Please do not yell at the referees if they do not catch it. If you see that, that we didn't get the win point, you need to remind the referees. There's a lot going on. If you yell and scream at them about that, they're going to take that as a negative. Please be respectful. Do not come back five matches later, two matches later, or anything, and say, well, we got the autonomous one point. It wasn't counted. That is your responsibility as well. Do not try to do that. Once everything is agreed upon, that's the end of it. Scoring. Here's how this works. Uh, please refer to the rules about scoring. The you have the two corners of uh, on your side. Those are not uh, scoring zones. Those are your loading zones. You have it on two on each side. All right. So you have to have two corners of the tri ball inside the barrier to be scored. If one only one corner is in, it's not scored. So it has to have two corners in and not being touched by the robot color of the same goal color. In other words, blue, if you're scoring in blue and you're touching the ball and it's two corners in, the ball's not gonna be scored. You have to not be touching any of your own scored uh, items. Elevation is the other way to score. Um, you, can, you can't be touching any tiles, walls, yellow cap, um, or a robot can't be lifting you that's touching the gray tile. So you must, then we measure from the floor up to the bottom of the wheels to get the elevation level score. So here's how it works. Autonomous win is eight points. A tri ball scored in a goal is five points. A tri ball scored just in an offensive zone is two points. Elevation top tier is 20. Second tier, 15, third tier, 10, fourth is five. All right, so that's how scoring goes. Just please be reminded these people are volunteering their time and be respectful. Okay, the next one is kind of usually a touching subject, so it doesn't matter what the referee calls it, whether it's pinning, trapping, holding, or lifting. It's all the same thing. Trapping, pinning, holding. Trapping is trapping someone into a one square area and not letting them leave. Okay. Holding is the same thing, but holding against the goal, against the wall, something like that, and not letting them move. If the robot that is being pinned or held is not trying to escape, then it's not a pin or a hold or a trap. If they're sitting there, they're sitting there, and I'm not going to call it. It is totally up to the judges whether it's called or not. And again, please be mindful that there's four teams in the ring. We're not going to be able to see everything the instant you want us to. So do not yell. Do not scream. You may try to get our attention, but do it respectfully. So how do you get away from a pin, a trap, a hold, and so forth? Basically, you have five seconds. If I see a red team pinning a blue, I'm going to go red, four, three, two, one, stop. If you do not remove yourself before stop, 
then you were going to receive a major violation or disqualification. The way you correct this is if you back away at least two feet for five complete full seconds. If you do not back away two feet or you do not hold off for five seconds, the count will resume wherever I left off. It's also negated if the pinning robot is then pinned by another robot or that pinning robot backs off and pins a different robot. Okay, try to be as respectful as possible. I have to see that the pinned robot is trying to escape. And in this game, there is one or two instances where there you're going to get pinned and it's not going to look like it, but just try your best to understand the referees are doing a million things at one time, trying to score, trying to watch for rule violations and so forth. How it match generally works is this. You're going to start 18 by 18 by 18 at the very beginning of the match. Any referee can measure any time they want to if they think you're over the 18. And that can also be a uh, major violation, so do not do that. You may expand after the start. And the uh, remember the expansion is 36 inches in any XY direction. Make sure you refer to the starting position in the rules, which is blue, your one one robot on each side of your blue elevation uh, poles. Same for red. Stay away from the nets. Uh, the nets are a big deal this year. If you entangle the net, I will ask you to disable. Do not continue trying to free yourself. You are then disabled. These nets are have the ability when you try to pull away, you're going to tear the goal up. Okay. Now, there is one little special rule that if you entangle yourself, during autonomous, uh, if the referee sees that you are minor dis uh, entangled, they can give you five seconds once the match starts to safely untangle yourself. Do not do this unless the referee says so. You do not stick your hands in the field at any time once autonomous has started. The only time you can do that is for match loads. Okay. You can also, uh, you cannot cause other robots to violate the rules. If you cause a robot to violate another rule, then you will be penalized. Uh, you can only hold one tri ball at a time. If by chance there's a tri ball stuck in your robot and you start handling another, you are in violation of the rules. Remember, there's concave surfaces and flat surfaces and convex. You need to look in the rules for that. Match loads. Um, you must be touching your colored pipe or breaking the barrier 3D wall on the inside plane of that pipe. In other words, you have to have something hanging over breaking the barrier of the inside plane or just touching the pipe to be loading. If you momentarily come off, that's fine. But if you get rammed and pushed off, you cannot keep loading balls until you are touching that pipe or breaking that barrier again, okay? Um, it's a reminder, you cannot de-score unless your opponent is double zoned. Uh, what else? Elevation. Elevation is protected. You may not contact your opponent elevation bar. You cannot contact an elevated robot. And you cannot be touching your, uh, elevated, uh, your elevation bar of your opponent, short adjacent bar or barriers as well. You cannot. So last 30 seconds, stay away from your opponent's zones. All right, in general, this is the way it's going to work. Uh, you, show, you show up to the tournament. Immediately, do not mess around. Go get, in, go get inspected. Uh, skills will immediately be open for teams to go through skills. You're going to have one, one turn when you go through the line. In other words, you get up there, you decide whether you want to do one programming or one autonomous. You run it, you immediately reset the field, and they get back in line. This is a very quick reset. There's only 12 balls on the field. Now, run it, get back in line. After skills is done, we will start the tournament. If you are not through inspection then and you, have, you can't pass, then you're not going to be in the tournament. If you don't get your skills in, we're going to try to open skills during lunch and so forth. All right, there are so many teams this year that we will not wait on anyone for matches. 
there's over 45 teams in the tournament. So what that means is, is you need to be your, you need to be queued up. Coaches, it is your responsibility to get your teams queued up and ready to go. Coaches, please, please, please have them ready and understand this when they get to the get to the field. You get to the queue table. You immediately go to the field. Teams, immediately turn your robot on and plug your cable in before the match ever even starts. When you get to the field, that is the first thing you do. Do not touch the scoring balls or anything unless the referee is, is notified. Now, get everything plugged up. When the head referee walks over, they're going to look, are you ready? Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay. You have to be ready or this tournament's going to go on all day long. All right. Plug into the controller, have it ready, be ready to go. Now, um, if your robot doesn't start real quick, there are a few things you can reach in. You can turn your robot on and off. You can change your battery. You can make sure the right program's running, but you cannot move your robot at all. Do not move it. Do not uh, rearrange the way things are, okay? It must stay the same, but you can do those, those few things. That's also in the rules. So autonomous is going to run. We'll declare a winner and then an autonomous point winner if there is one. The, we're going to go three, two, one, go. Then the driver control starts and it's going to run for a minute, 45 seconds. <laughs> Please keep in mind that the referees are doing as much as they can. And there's a lot of things going on at one time. At the end of the match, we're going to say, do you agree with this score? And please be respectful. These, these referees are not counting scores. They're counting scored objects. So what you're looking for is you need to be having someone count the goals and so forth ahead of time. Do not, the, the referee is going to walk up to you and say, do you agree? That doesn't mean start counting then. You need to already have it counted. He's going to do this. And if you start counting, if you keep doing this over and over, we may just hit okay and move away because you should already have it counted. Don't be that guy. All right. Also, once you agree, that's it. There is no more protesting the score after that. If you have to protest a rules, rules violation or something like that, it has to be done immediately with the head referee. Do not come one, two or more matches later and say, Hey, this rule was broken. Do not do that. Can't do that. Scores. Same thing. Um, so the way that DQs are going to work is again, I'm going to say it again. If you've done multiple minor violations, you can have DQ. A major violation can be a warning or a DQ, depending on how severe it is, or if you've done it over and over and over. Um, I know it sucks, but it, it's, it's, it's bad when you violate a rule and you get called on it and you're mad. But please keep in mind, the actions that you do after and during a match carry over to that referee, and they also report that back to judges and event partners and everything else. Please, please be respectful. Um, we'll do skills first, then we'll do qualification rounds. You will have about six of those, I believe. And then once that is done, we'll do alliance selection. And then we will do elimination rounds. Elimination is single elimination. So that is a one and done. So you got to bring your game. After that, we will have a very quick break and we'll do an awards ceremony. So I hope this has helped you out and I hope to see you there. Hope your team wins and y'all have a great, great week finishing up your robots and getting ready to come compete in the great VEX world circuit. Get ready to go to Worlds if you can too. Thanks. Bye.